Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nitsy coming back with another Bulls Eye of a tutorial here today on the channel. I'm really excited. I'm really revved up and energized to bring y'all this one right here. I got the highly requested Polo G vocal tutorial. So let's jump into it right away. If y'all do have any more ideas or suggestions for any different type of artists y'all want to see, drop it down below. We're more than happy to get to it. Drop these gems and you know break down the sound, how you could get um you know that type of sound, that type of style y'all going for. So let's get right to it. If y'all do want to get the template. You could drop the link down below. Go ahead and check it out. So let's play this right away and let's get to it. Oh, cop the BMW. New deposit. I picked up another bag. Like, fuck it, I'ma count while I'm in it. I had plans flying, trying screaming money, counter change, clinging shit. I guess that's how it sound when you win. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding. I've been making like 2,000 a minute. So high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm probably gon' drown when I'm in it. I bet she gon' get loud when I'm in it. And we might have a child when I'm finished. Okay, let's go. That was me trying to do my best impression with Polo G. I'm really, I really felt good about this one. I just had a great feeling about it. I just love this song. I love Polo G's music. He's just so relatable. And uh, let's jump into it right away. So the very first thing this video is about trying to get those melodic mainstream trap type of vocals. You know, Polo G is a guy that when he's he's doing his melodies, it sounds so effortless. It literally sounds like Brush just talking. And a part of that too is you know kind of like the processing. You know, the way that you kind of shape that vocal to make it feel so so natural like his vocals just feel so natural to the point where it's like it's so inviting it makes you feel like it's really a conversation and that's what i always be trying to talk about with making music it's all about relatability so um let's look at this right away what it sound like with and without oh cop the bmw new deposit i picked up another bag like fuck it i'm a cow all a minute I had plans flying, trying to spend the money, count the change, clean the shit, I guess that's how it sound when you win. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding, I've been making like 2,000 a minute, so high up through the clouds, I was swimming, I'm probably gon' drown when I'm in it, I bet she gon' get loud when I'm in it, and we might have a child when I'm f So that feels like a huge, huge, big difference. I love when I make these tutorials, I want you guys to understand like how I make them too as well, so first of all, this room that I'm inside of literally has no acoustic treatment, like I'm literally inside of like a living room right now. And main thing, I just want to show you guys that it doesn't matter really about the equipment or anything like that. You just got to believe in yourself that you can always make it sound mainstream. Like, come on, listen to that raw vocal. That raw vocal just sounded like a uh, whatever type of vocal. But because I believe in myself and I love making music, I just was grinding it down and I made that bit sound similar to Polo G. You feel me? So that's the, always the thing, guys. Don't ever get let down because you don't have the same microphone, the same equipment or plugins. Use what you got. Believe in yourself. Your belief in yourself and your love for music is what's going to make it sound good. I'm trying to tell you all that. All right. So let's look at, um, you know, this uh, Polo G chain right now as well. I'm just going to mute the ad libs real quick. On the original song, he ain't had no ad libs, but I did some ad libs as well because you know sometimes he do like to do it and you know just in case if y'all have you know when y'all use it i want y'all to have that so very first thing right right here was we had an eq and it's very interesting we know with polo g's vocal i was going for warmth that was the very first thing i imagined i imagined the big fuzzy cloud you know so um that's the thing sometimes when you make music you have to have a visual picture inside of your head and with polo g when he's a clown when i'm in it i guess i'm in it when i'm in like that just made me feel like he was in the clouds he was on the jet so i try to make that vocal feel like something that's very warm you know warmth is a very inviting thing like how i said with polo g voice like he just talking like it just sound like he's so melodic like he's just talking it just it's very inviting for you you know it makes you feel like it's your friend you know right next to you talking to you you feel me so that's the thing about his vocal i wanted to make it very inviting and very wide open so that's what i did with like the low end of his vocal the the um you know the mid-range i wasn't too aggressive you know i had like a little low shelf and a little like cut right here just to kind of really just tonally shape his vocal so let's listen to what it sounds like with and without Oh, cop the BMW, new deposit, I picked up another bag, like fuck it, I'ma count while I'm in it. I had planes flying, trying screaming money, count the change, clean the shit, I guess that's how it sound when you win it. So yeah, pretty much with that EQ, that was just like tonally balancing, cleaning it up just a little bit, you know, because uh, with Polo G's vocal, when you're doing something like a singing type of down oh, in a minute, you know, it's very hard to generate low end energy. You know, his music still does need a little bit power because the beat has that sub bass in the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
you know so i was thinking about that too you know hip-hop is one of those genres where the bass is always so loud and you don't want the, it, it to feel like the bass is bullying the lead vocals so the low end was pretty important for me and also you know with polo g's vocal as well i had to come up very close to make it sound very intimate very warm you know when somebody comes up closer to you in real life what do you feel you feel their body heat, you feel more warmth. So warmth is also a thing that is a proximity. But like I said, you know, I had already had that put that bit in my head. So this, because this is a mainstream type of vocal, I tried to use something that's a little bit, um, you know, more modern, which is a LA-3A. So that does not have the tube um, driving the optical component. So I want to get you guys to understand that when it comes to like an optical compressor, this part is what's doing the compression. It's not the actual tube doing the compression. Some people might say like a LA-2A is a tube compressor, but that's not true. This little thingy right here is what's actually doing the compression. It's doing it with light. So pretty much what happens in a LA-3A is the solid state components, they drive the music into the light. So as the light sees a bigger signal, what does it do? It gets brighter and brighter. It's kind of crazy because when you think of light, you think of light as the quote unquote, the speed of light, something very fast, but not really. When it comes to an optical compressor is kind of a little bit different you know so what happens is the solid state components they drive the sound into the the light the light cell right and the light cell gets brighter and brighter and brighter and it provides that resistance which is quote unquote the gain reduction so let's look at that oh cop the bmw new deposit i picked up another bag like fuck it i'm a clone while i'm in it I had planes flying, trying screaming money, counter change, clinging shit. I guess that's how it sound when you win. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding. I've been making like 2,000 a minute. So high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it. I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it. And we might have a child. So we're not doing nothing crazy over here. We're doing about uh, one to three dB. So, you know, of course, you know, that's what we have right here for you guys inside of the template. And then after that, we had a de and the de was doing a, a decent amount of work. Um, you know, it was, hit, it was hitting it about like two to six dB. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, cop the BMW, new deposit, I picked up another bag Like, fuck it, I'm a clown while I'm in it I had planes flying, trying screaming money, counter change, clinging shit I guess that's how it sound when you win I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding I've been making like 2,000 a minute So high up through the clouds, I was swimming I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it I bet she gonna get loud when I'm so that's what I want you guys to understand too, you know, with like something like a DS or two is that like when people are rapping, cut, cut, put, put all of that stuff, those words have more energy. That's why you see when the rapping part comes through, it looks like the DS is working more harder because those words when somebody's rapping has a lot more energy. But when I was saying cloud on oh, many, like just literally the way I did it, like Polo G, it just those words, how I was saying it, it was so smooth to the point where the DS was barely working. So we're going to leave it at one to three DB. I thought it did more, but you never really want to do more unless you're going for like like a certain type of effect or a sound all right cool with the multi-band for um you know polo g i was always paying attention to the low uh range of his voice and i had kind of like a uh, not doing too much attenuation because i kind of wanted the vocal to still sound very 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 wide open that was my main thing warmth wide open i wanted the beat to be like a cloud you know imagine if you touch the cloud how it would feel it would feel like very fuzzy and it would have a nice smooth texture to it and that's what i definitely went with so sometimes you got to use that picture in your head and also think about like what what does that picture feel like if you were able to touch it put that into the music then now the people can make the connection with it you know what i mean so let's look at that oh cop the bmw new deposit i picked up another bag like fuck it i'm a clown while i'm in it i had planes flying trying screaming money counter change clinging shit i guess that's how it sound when you win i ain't joking do it sound like i'm kidding i've been making like two thousand a minute so high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it. I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it. And we might have a child when. And of course, you know, like I always say with the multi bands, I always play around with them a little bit to make sure that it's moving musically to complement the flow of the rapper. So we were ma ma mainly just attacking that mid range, that low, low, low mid of Polo G's voice because I, I still want the voice to uh, be powerful, but I wanted to tighten that up a little bit. You know, warmth is a very important thing. Think about if you was in a freezing blizzard, you know, you was in a freezing blizzard and, and then you saw a warm house. As soon as you walked into that warm house and you felt that warmth, it would make you feel a lot more cozy. And that's kind of what this beat is doing to me. It made me feel a lot more cozy after that. 
we used the uh, um our comp and we used the 1176 so this is 1176 this is a la2a that's the beautiful thing about our comp you get the best of both words and you also get to pick between automatic release or manual so yeah um after that we used warmth kind of like what i'm telling you right now i'm using that image in my head i used the fastest attack because i just really wanted to clamp onto that vocal right away um just to give it a little bit more of that power that would you know just kind of help it really sit inside of the beat so that's the thing about compression it's kind of like getting a, a trash compactor you know sometimes if you got a bunch of trash sitting in a bag people they throw that bin a, a trash compactor because it squeezes it it makes it easier to manage so that's what i'm doing with the compression let's look Oh, cop the BMW, new deposit, I picked up another bag Like, fuck it, I'ma count while I'm in it I had plans flying, trying screaming money, count the change Clinging shit, I guess that's how it sound when you win I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding I've been making like 2,000 a minute So high up through the clouds, I was swimming I'm probably gon' drown when I'm in it I bet she gon' get loud when I'm in it and man and that bit even sound like i did an eq move with the compression so you see that's how it is i understand you know the frequencies that are going into the compression i understand what trash is going into the compactor so as soon as i throw that bitch in there it's gonna shape it the way i want it to be you feel me so that's the main important thing too it kind of sounds like i did an eq move and of course i understand that the r comp on this gain right here that's a colored gain it's not a clean so this is a clean fader right here that's not going to give me any more of a juice or sauce or you know tomatoes or lemon pepper or you know, any type of seasoning, that's not gonna give me any more um, flavor. But this will give me a little bit more flavor because I understand the R, com the R comp is kind of modeling the 1176 um, LA-2A situation. So I push this as well, knowing that I'm gonna get a little bit more loudness, but I'm also gonna get a little more color. So you guys, eventually when you get good at music, you will be able to tell the difference between clean gain and dirty gain. Okay, so next thing after that, we have the SSL um, EV and the SSL is an incredible one. You know, before this, the UAD, I would have to say the UAD had a little bit more features but this one came in and you know stepped in front of the way to uad because the uad version it has the mic pre you know so that was also part of the console the other ssle the regular one doesn't have the mic pre and also you get the two different types of eqs especially for the low end i think that was pretty important polo g's vocal you know we didn't roll off too much low end because we still wanted the vocal to be very powerful then i was just really kind of like cutting in some of that um cutting in some of that boominess that you know can't come from the the trash compactor you know sometimes when you squeeze in something more stuff comes out you know so it's a situation like that too if you took a pillow and you started really squeezing the pillow and pulling it back and forth well some of the you know cotton inside of the pillow might just pop out or you become a little bit more loose so we're just using this eq to really tighten it up i think i did do yeah i did a little push on the top as well i wanted a little bit of that brightness the ssl is very musical i usually i don't go to eq for brightness but this was a situation where the ssl the tone of it is very important to understand and i think i did do a little compression let's look oh cop the bmw new deposit i picked up another bag like fuck it i'ma count while i'm in it i had plans flying trying screaming money count the change clinging shit i guess that's how it sound when you win i ain't joking do it sound like i'm kidding i've been making like two thousand a minute so high up through the clouds, I was swimming I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it And we might have a child when I'm finished yeah, so it wasn't a situation where that compressor was even working all the time. It was working at 1 dB, you know, usually just where there was a, a like a lot of energy, you know, when, you know, the vocals coming in, coming in. So I just used it kind of as a way to, um, you know, just give me a little bit of oomph on those words that just have a little bit more power. You know, even though we use the optical compressor in the beginning to, you know, have our vocals level out. And like I said, you know, everybody's asking me this question lately. Look, if you don't have a UAD or Apollo, just do this, bruh. All you have to do is just pull out an optical compressor and make it do one to two dB. Pretty much what's gonna happen is one to two dB is not gonna change the tone of the vocal because an optical compressor, it has a slow attack. So it lets all of the stuff come in through the gate. It's kind of like when you walk into a supermarket, you know, the sliding doors at the supermarket bit, you feel me, you walk in that bit and guess what happens? It takes, it, the, door, the door don't open up instantly. It takes like a little delay for the door to open up. Okay, cool, that's your vocal going into this compressor, you know, one to two dB you know and pretty much lets all of the the character of your vocal come through it lets your vocal walk through the supermarket door but 
after you walk past through the supermarket door, it doesn't close right away. It's there's still a little delay, and that's what a slow release is. So just do one to two dB on an optical compressor, and your vocals will be like this, where you know it's not changing the tone, it's just managing it. You know, it's just letting it get into a manageable position, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then after that, let's look at the um studio rack. Let's go back to it. Then we had another DSer. I mean, I think this DSer was doing a little work, though. No cap. Crowd screaming, money counter change, clinging shit. I guess that's how it sound when you win. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding. I've been making like 2,000 a minute. So high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it. I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it. And we might have a child when I'm finished. Yeah, so that DSR is working a little bit more. And like I always say, you know, rapping contrasted to singing. Rapping has a little bit more power. Da, 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 cut, put, cut. All those words have more energy. So you need to understand uh, that words have energy in you. When you're doing compression and EQ, all of that energy and stuff like that plays into it. You feel me? Like, you got to understand what energy is and how much energy you need to, to get the song moving. It's kind of like a car. Bro, you don't take Duracell batteries and like a double A and put it in the car and turn the key thinking it's going to start up. No, some songs need more power than others. Some cars need different batteries than other cars. So you got to understand that too. You know, the words have power. The words have energy. You know, like an engineer, you like an electrician. You got to figure, you got to figure out, okay, do I need to put some power? power inside the bedroom the living room like where do i need to put the energy at in certain spots you know for example like with the ssle you see that it was only working on certain words because i knew like okay those words have a little bit more energy so let me just bring a compressor that's not gonna work all the time but only on those words that have more energy to enhance it you know and then after that we have a fresh air this is like my s recovery this is my like mainstream c800 baby Crowd screaming, money counter change, clinging shit. I guess that's how it sound when you win. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding. I've been making like 2,000 a minute. So high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it. I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it. And we might have a chance. And then the fresh air is not even really about necessarily brightness. It's more about the, now you hear the sliding in between the words, you know, now you hear the nuances. So yeah, that's kind of how I kind of got it going right now, pretty much. And let me see this SSLE right here too, with this mic pre. Did I push the, I pushed the mic pre a little bit too. And the mic pre, when you push that mic pre, it just gives you a little bit of distortion, a little bit of buzzing, a little bit of that little B. Hmm. It gives you a little bit of that. And uh, that was really important because now you hear this shh be in between the words. Listen. Crowd screaming, money counter change, clinging shit. I guess that's how it sound when you win. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding. I've been making like 2,000 a minute. So high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it. I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it. And we might have a child when I'm. Like, listen to those S's. Those S's kind of just feel like a cloud where they're, they're just a little fuzzy and they're smooth. So that's what I'm always saying. You know, it's always coming back to the image in your head and painting that picture into the music. Next thing, J37 tape. 50 IPS that's pretty neutral 88 uh, formula and I just like using the tape because it helps the music just sit back into the uh, you know the, the two track beat it helps the vocal sit back in the two track beat and the main thing too about that too is just due to the fact that you know with something like this tape it's just the fact that it kind of helps give like a little haircut to the vocal, you know, because the, the 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 preamp from the SSL, you got it buzzing, but now this is kind of smoothing it out a little bit, you know. It's kind of giving it a haircut a little bit where, you know, it's giving it a little fade. And because it's doing that now, it's just like it's making you relax. It's making you really feel like you're in a cloud. Crowd screaming, money counter change, clinging shit. I guess that's how it sound when you win. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding. I've been making like 2,000 a minute. So high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it. I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it. And we might have a child. And that 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 J37, it just adds that life, that human, that human element. You know what I mean? That human element is important for people to make a connection to the song. And that J37 tape you just hear like before, it sounds too accurate. It just accurate is not always the best thing. Squeaky clean is not always the best thing. Sometimes you want it to be non-linear, have a little bit of you know type of waviness because you know us as people, as humans, you know your heart. Sometimes it beat fast, sometimes it beat slow. It's a thing that's constantly changing. So that's what I like about tape. It brings the human connection where it's a little. 
little bit non-linear. Then lastly, we had a, you know, our Vox, you know, with the gate choking that bit, putting our hands around the neck of the vocal and choking it, making it look, talk a little more tight. And then after that, yep, you know, we're pretty much good. Um, then we had two boring ad age delays, nothing crazy. You know, one was on one side and it has lo-fi on it. So that's dirty. And the other one on the right hand side, um, it did not have lo-fi on it. So it was a little bit more clean. So pretty much I was just doing that. You can't even hear the delays here and you got to understand the beat. So let's listen to the beat real quick. Like the beat literally is telling me, yo, you don't have space to put hella reverb and delay. See, literally, the rim shot. Do you hear how much reverb is inside of that rim shot? The, the, people was asking me, how do you juice up a two-track beat? I kept it real with my dog, bro. I told him straight up, bro, you got to learn how to pick a good two-track beat. And then even then, when you pick a good one, you got to learn how to listen to the two-track beat. The two-track beat is talking to me. The two-track beat say, hey, I'm, I'm already taking a shower. I'm already wet. There's already water on me. There's already reverb here. The two-track beat is already telling me that. So I'm listening to it, and I'm like, all right, cool. I can't put more delay. I can't put that much more reverb. There's only a finite amount of space so you gotta you gotta know that too the two track beat is literally screaming i'm literally underwater right now like you heard the rim shot got water there's a sub bass there's also the dun, 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 dun. the guitar got reverb the little background hey, 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 that got reverb in it so it's like you gotta get in where you fit in you know that's what i always trying to be tell y'all so yeah one is clean the other one is dirty and then after that we had this um you know our reverb and our reverb was really just nothing crazy like i said you got to get in where you fit in i mean the cup was already full with water so the only thing I could do is put a couple more droplets here. You see, my reverb time is short. It's a bright chamber. I used it really more just to brighten up the vocal. So sometimes some of the brightness of the vocal can come from the effects. You can have a bright delay or a bright reverb. It doesn't just have to come from EQ if you want brightness. You know what I mean? Then we had a J37 tape just to kind of like give the reverb kind of like a little type of a crackling type of situation. Because uh, what I also did on the J37 tape here is I also started pushing a little bit of the um the noise level you feel me a little bit of the wow and flutter too um i pushed a little bit of the saturation as well so it was a situation like that so let's listen to the reverb real quick new deposit i picked up another bag like fuck it i'm a count while i'm in it i had planes flying trying screaming money counter change clinging shit i guess that's how it sound when you win i ain't joking do it sound like i'm kidding i've been making like two thousand a minute so high up through the clouds i was swimming i'm probably gonna drown when i'm in it i bet she gonna get loud when i'm in it and we might have a ch so I was just using that to kind of create like, like, uh, have you ever seen Dragon Ball Z that one time where like Goku was on the cloud, you know how the cloud was under him. So that's kind of like what the reverb is right here. You know, it's a cloud. The reverb is a cloud in itself. Oh, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's like under, under, underneath the vocal. And I'm using that with the side chain compressor. I'm pushing that bit down the whole way. Studio rack. All you got to do is so easy to side chain. You just click SC input and bam, there you go. And yeah, you know, fast attack, a kind of like a slow release. Sometimes I might go between optical or electro so electro is more responsive how it lets go to reverb opto is more smooth all right cool all right then after that we had a doubler to get more width we had two parallel compressors one of them being the r comp nothing crazy and then after that we had the sslE channel and uh, we were using that for parallel compression new, new deposit i picked up another bag like fuck it i'm a count while i'm in it i had plans flying trying screaming money counter change clinging shit i guess that's how it sound when you win i ain't joking do it sound like i'm kidding I've been making like 2,000 a minute So high up through the clouds I was swimming I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it so yeah, very interesting situation. A slight amount of EQ on the parallel compression, just because I didn't want it to uh, bring up some of that, uh, you know, that low, low, low. But the parallel compression, definitely what it does is it gives a lot of body to the vocal. You see how the vocal kind of loses power. You know, the parallel compression is a very dense, 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 you know, signal that's blended back into the lead vocal to give it more power. Like I said, I'm an electrician. I'm an electrician, build something. The house need more power, so I'm gonna put more power inside the house. And then last thing we have the ad libs. We're gonna run through the ad libs so fast. Um, 
um, you know, just a basic like EQ and I did not do a radio effect. I wanted my high end to extend so I could hear the ad libs so it could blend a part of, you know, kind of like the music and everything. And then after that, you know, we had an Arvox, you know, the Arvox was really just to come in there and, you know, kind of smash the ad libs a little bit so they could be dense and a little bit more audible. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding I've been making like 2,000 a minute So high up through the clouds, I was swimming I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it I bet she gonna get loud when I'm all right, cool. Then after that, we have the C4 multiband, really just attacking that high mid, that low mid, keeping that ad libs very consistent and control. So sometimes multiband is about the flow, but sometimes it's all it could be used in a way, kind of like EQ. You know what I mean? Where it just clamps down and holds on to something. I ain't joking. Do it sound like I'm kidding? I've been making like two thousand a minute. So high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm probably gonna drown when I'm in it. I bet she gonna get loud when I'm in it, and we might have a child when I'm. So really just smoothing out those ad libs a lot. Then we had the J37 tape in there just to give it a little bit of contrast. The lead vocal is on 15 and this one is on 7.5, which is darker. So contrast, bright and dark, you know, sky and moon pretty much is what we're doing. Then we have like a basic guy, a little reverb, a bigger reverb. Then we have this, you know, right here. I think this is doing parallel compression as well. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding. I've been making like 2,000 a minute. So high up through the clouds, I was swimming. I'm so yeah, that's the thing that I love about the SSL. It helps give a little bit of that grit, a little bit of that, that bite to the ad lib. So I wanted my lead vocal to be smooth and then I wanted my ad libs to be a little bitey. So that's what music is all about too. You know, you can create distance and depth with contrast. You know, I'm giving them a point of reference. The lead vocal is smooth, but the ad libs are a little bit snappy because they got that little VCA type of parallel compression. All right. And then after that, you know, last thing that we have here is my uh, buzzing delay. So I pushed push the mic pretty hard as hell, man. And then after that, I sent that into the delay. So it's kind of like giving the uh, delay for the ad libs some distortion and it really just helps create a new texture you know inside of the the, the the sky that we're making right now i ain't joking do it sound like i'm kidding i've been making like two thousand a minute so high up through the clouds i was swimming i'm probably gonna drown when i'm in it i bet she gonna get loud when i'm in it and we might have a child when i'm finished yep so pretty much you know that's all we have here let me just update this too Polo G ad libs. And yeah, you know, we grinding, we grinding. You know, I woke up, got this template done for y'all right away immediately. Didn't even have no time to change nothing. So um, yeah, I just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my YouTube family. I didn't want to spend too much time on this video. Oh, last thing y'all, you guys are getting the um, mastering chain preset as well. This is already here. So this template comes fully loaded, a beat leveler, lead vocals, ad libs. It also comes with um, mastering, a basic mastering chain. So yeah, y'all getting everything for the same great low prices. Just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my YouTube family. Drop any more suggestions down below. Appreciate y'all now. Peace.